Here it is, the Black Sable. I made reference to it in another video. I've had a lot of guys say, hey, please review that, whether it's good or bad. I just really want to know about the knife. Here it is. And let me tell you right off, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I think the Black Sable is an overblown collector showpiece, is what I think. And I think it's extremely expensive and basically a collector's knife. Let me tell you why I feel that way. And remember what I said in the other video is I can't lie to you guys. If I feel something is jacked up with a certain piece of gear, I have to tell you. Otherwise, the words just stop coming. I can't talk. And the Black Sable overall has some issues um, that are very serious if you're choosing to use it as a folding tactical, i.e. emergency defensive blade. First off, the knife deployment is the biggest. Getting the blade out of the handle one-handed is nigh unto impossible for me. Remember, I am a very experienced folding tactical knife user. I have a lot of experience and practice deploying blades. So I'm not some pansy here that just doesn't know how to actuate it. The first problem is that thumb stud. You can see it's shaped like a mini volcano, which blows. Uh, very little traction provided by that thumb stud by its design. It's... It's basically tapered and smooth, and you're not going to get a good purchase on, on it. Secondly is the overall physics of the blade and the location of that thumb stud. It's very close to the pivot point, which gives us a very small moment arm or leverage on the blade. Therefore, getting the blade out and overcoming the in-handle spring resistance is a difficult proposition, and one that after much practice I am not able to master. Not quickly, at least. You saw that I can bring it out with one hand, one thumb, but it's not a quick proposition. I really don't have the area here to maneuver and really snap it out. But I've tried and tried, and maybe I'm just a retard, could be. But the Black Sable by Cold Steel does not deploy quickly for me. And that is a showstopper in this POU. The POU being a defensive combat blade, emergency variety. You would want that thing to come out one-handed, not two-handed, very quickly indeed. Let me try it. I just, it just doesn't happen quickly. You know, now can we fool around with that pivot point and loosen things up? Maybe. As you can see, it's a proprietary pivot point on that side, and then you have a regular, what is that, Torx on the other? So you could try doing that. Maybe that would loosen it up a little bit. But you're not going to overcome that fulcrum issue, which I identified this you know it's very difficult to overcome that secondly and i'm just going to knock the bad crap out first remember bad news is best delivered delivered early and in great detail the jimping here although aesthetic and does add to the beauty of the knife and it is a beautiful knife but the jimping is pretty much non-functional not pretty much it is non-functional again a big hit on the blade this is a fighting knife. It should have big time jimping here, preferably on the top and the bottom. Albeit on the bottom, it's less of a factor because we got a nice finger indentation to put our finger on. That's a black sable. Not too cool. Um, also, it's not a super lightweight knife. Black sable weighs 8.4 ounces, and that's chunky, truth be told. Although, there's other ones that I like uh, in the Cold Steel line that are way similar to that. And I'll roll them in now. How about the 5.4 ounce Black Rhino, which I think, as far as a fighting knife, is superior. Comes out quick. Oh, I love that snap. Did you hear that? Mm, it's just awesome. Fast knife, big, decent blade. Let's compare the Black Rhino blade against the Black Sable. You will see that they're basically the same size. Granted, very different shapes. And that kind of gets into the second kind of cool. I'll talk about that here in a second. But the Black Rhino is by far a superior fighting blade than the Black Sable on just the fact that I can get it out quicker. You know, and I think the big old clip blade, as I'll talk about in its review, very functional, very deadly. Yeah, that Black Sable blade looks meaner, that's for sure. I don't think it has anything over that blade shape, truth be told. And this is a much faster blade to deploy than the Black Sable. There, those are the big issues I have. Well, not all of them. Let me go back. Sorry for the bump. One of the other big issues I have with this knife, hello, 
is the cost. There's your retail cost right there. $490? You know, what's it's being sold for $300 at my location now. That's still a heck of a lot of money for a manual action tactical folding knife. That's crazy. I shouldn't say crazy. It's just on the very, very expensive side. And when I get up to that stratospheric price point, I expect stratospheric performance. I want a knife that's going to perform up to its price point. If I have a $300 knife, I shouldn't have issues with deployment. It should be like the Bradley alias, like the Sabenza, that just come out upon thinking about it. That's how smooth and effortless the deployment of those outstanding blades is. Not so with the Black Sable. So, yeah, big issue, big price point, and you're not going to get the performance out of it. That's the bad thing. Now let's talk about the second type of cool. And the second type of cool is just intrinsic enjoyment of the blade. And I will say that the Black Sable is very impressive in looks. It's very striking. It would make a good Hollywood movie knife. In fact, expect to see it in some movies because it has a very visually striking and unusual blade shape. Movie directors like such things. It makes the, interest, it makes the movie more interesting. Look at the polish job on that Sanmai 3 blade. It's gorgeous. It's kind of a double-edged sword, no pun intended, in that anytime you get a high-polished blade, as you can see, you're going to get smudge marks on it all the time. You'll be wiping your blade down constantly, and pretty much they're going to show smudges. But it's impressive, isn't it? Shines, glints. If you can get the blade out, I guarantee it'll be shining in the moonlight, and the bad guy will probably run when he sees it. If he doesn't, he's an idiot, because that's a nasty-looking blade with a very strong tip, and the kind of the tanto tip too so it's strong and very sharp as it comes out of the box very sharp and I would expect nothing less from a $300 knife retail 500 yeah no kidding nice imprinting on the blade there showing the name I like the curvature of the blade I think it's useful a lot of belly for slash cuts again a strong tip for any piercing attacks you might have to do and with kind of a swedge ground swedge on the top good looking blade and then it has those, I believe, the titanium bolsters with the black micarta handle. Also cool looking. Very cool looking. But it doesn't overcome the disadvantages of a blade in the first type of cool, at least for me, nothing fancy. It just doesn't. Now, in the store where I met, Impact Guns, they're speaking very favorably of this in just the way it looks. They love it. However, it still sits on the store shelf unsold. Why? Because it's expensive, and there's not a lot of guys that are going to pony up for a $300 manual action folding knife. And getting back to that Black Rhino, how you doing? This knife was less than half the price, about $130. Still has a lot of the cool factors to it, doesn't it? Still has a polished aluminum frame, black micar polished micarta handles. Beautiful. It's not a Sammy 3 OS 8A blade with polished lands on the top. Very cool and very functional. To me, I think it is a superior blade over the Black Sable, and I would choose it any day, regardless of the cost. You know, unless I'm a Hollywood director looking for a Hollywood knife, then maybe the Black Sable would be the ticket. Along with the Black Sable, no doubt, is you're going to get two pocket clips. Because if you reverse them from side to side, you're going to have to have the other one angled the other way. And that's... Cool. At least they're carrying it tip up, and I prefer it. And that is a pretty pocket clip, polished, kind of skinny, mounted relatively high on the handle with a good lanyard hole there, which would function. And again, I do love that black polished micarta. I always have. I love it. I like how the lock is radius a little bit here, so it's, there's no sharp corners here. And it has decent spring tension on the lock. With a combat folding knife, you need to have that. That is one criticism I will level to. The Cold Steel Black Rhino is that I think the spring tension on its lock is inadequate. You can see the spring bar inside there. It needs to be toughened up, guys. It's a fighting knife, so I don't want to accidentally fold that knife while I'm engaged. But that's the Black Sable, down and dirty. And no, I'm sorry, I'm just not a fan. It's an expensive blade, extremely hard to deploy, and it doesn't have jimping which its POU would scream for 
I would think, albeit we could probably solve that with some grip tape, but overall it's kind of a show-stopping design. If you're into the second type of cool and how cool it is and impressing your friends, then maybe those $300 might be worth it. Again, you might find it on the internet for around $270 or something, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. But that's it. There's nothing fancy. Keeping it real with yet another cold steel design. Hmm, you guys still think I'm on the cold steel payroll? Not quite. See you guys out.